Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches, and this is a yarn chat. This is yarn chat 63, I believe. Um, yeah, I'm just going to share with you some of the projects that I've been working on. Um, the first thing that I wanted to show you, though, is just a bit ago, I posted a video where I went to the Nina Walmart. <laughs> Who knew that the Walmart 20 minutes away would have far more yarn, but it did. It has a really great selection. Um, selection of hooks, varieties of yarn, not just the mainstay, lots of line brand. And one of the things I bought was four skeins of the line brand puzzle yarn. Now, I saved the wrappers, but then I lost them. So I'm assuming that I set them somewhere. And because one of my husband's biggest pet peeves is me leaving those ball bands everywhere, I'm pretty sure he probably threw them away. But that's fine. But this is made out of the puzzle yarn. It's just that simple granny that I've been doing most of the year. You know, where it's just a square granny. And then I do like a row of skip one. This one just turned out every eight rows I did one. Um, and then I did not color control. I just picked up the yarn and kept going. The really nice thing about this yarn is that I felt like it really blended well together through the color changes. And this was four skeins. Um, this is just a lap, lap gan size. You know, sitting on the couch, cuddled up, not too big. I mean, I think I've held it up enough in here for you to see about how big it is. Um, to be honest, I think if I wanted to make it just a little bigger, I probably would go get two, but I'm not interested in driving to Nina. Okay, so that is one thing I made. Then I decided to clean up my craft area a bit. And I was kind of getting bogged down in the boxes from Crochet Society. So I decided to start making some projects. The first thing, first box is this one. Um, this is, let's see if she tells us when, what month this one is from. And I can see if I can find any dates in here. Um, this one has a lot of amigurumi in it. Interestingly enough, I was turned on by this box right away because it reminded me of this book my husband just bought me and I was wondering if it was the same designer, the Whimsical Stitches one. I'll put a link in the description again to buying this on Amazon um, because there's a lot of amigurumi produce and stuff in there. So I thought maybe it was the same designer, but it's not. So anyway, with no further ado, yeah, this is Melissa Bradley. And Lauren Ipsy is the designer of that book. I made the pail and shovel. Um, I will tell you that personally, I feel like a little more stuffing should be in here. I used all the stuffing that she provided for this package, plus the leftover stuffing from the Snow Yeti from a few months ago. Um, okay, so I never actually made the Snow Yeti. I just used the white yarn to make more cats. That white cat from one of the first boxes. And so I used half of the Snow Yeti stuffing to make a second cat. And so half of it was left over and I put it in here. And to be honest, I feel like it should be a little stuffier. I don't know. The only thing that got to be a little tricky for me that I had to redo a couple times was the brim of the bucket. And personally, I don't think the handle is very floppy. Like how they have you sew it on, it can't, they have you sew it like right like here off to the side. But to be honest, if I were to do it again or if I were to cut it off, I would probably make it so this was coming off the top so you could hold it. Because if you do hold it, it's kind of topsy-turvy, you know. And then here's the shovel. All you do is you sew or you crochet in the tube all the way around and then you sew it over here for the little handle. So yeah, I mean, it's cute enough. What I'm gonna do with it, I have no idea. So currently, it's just been sitting on my shelf. I guess for right now, I'll put the bucket there. I'll put my little cup of coffee there. Yeah, so I'm filling up this with random amigurumis. You see, I got my cat. I got a little bunny I made. I got the bucket and the coffee. So that was one of the Bella Coco boxes. Then the other one that I started working on, because I figured, you know, let's say clear this out. Um, I wonder if this one says what box it's from. 
Well, it's this floral one. There she is on Sarah. There she is. Um, I decided to make the lion. If I have the time and the patience, I'll look at, I'll look back at the videos of when I unbox these and put them in the description. Now, occasionally Sarah Jane does sell the extra boxes that haven't gone out, but to be honest, I don't think there's really any left. I'm trying to show you the picture. Oh, this is what I'm making right here. I decided to make this amigurumi lion. So this is what I've got here. I have got his head and his stuffing's coming out there. There's his little head. The stitching for the face is really simple on this one, so I was liking that. I've got my unicorn thing in here. Um, and here is the body for the lion. Um, both of these you leave open, which is a technique I've just started working with. I've never done that before with amigurumi, where you leave it open and then you, I'm guessing you jam this up in here. Oh, you can't even see. You jam, you get this head stuffing in there and then you put it in there and then you sew around the edge. I don't know. I'm not feeling very confident about it. I really prefer the friendly red fox's method of making starting from the bottom and doing continuous. I'm not a fan of sewing heads on. It's just not something I'm good at. Um, the only things left I have to do are the feet, the arms. I made the ears. They're just floating around in here. They're very easy. The tail, which I'm not going to like because the tail is one of those tubes. You know, you all my groomy, groomy people know those tubes are hard. And then the mane. And then you have to like, they give you the measurements for the mane, but as you make it, you have to put it around his head. I've kind of run out of stuffing now. I don't have any more left. I used up all that she had for the lion. So I'm going to have to go buy some more or dig out. Can I tell you the truth, folks? I have a, we sold, we got rid of a couch and I have one of the throw pillows that I've been pulling stuffing out of. I mean, nothing bad happened to it, but it's from the middle, from a throw pillow. So that's what I'm going to have to do to finish it. And then they say you can do whatever pattern you want for the, the mane. And they come in these little tiny skeins here. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have a significant amount of this left over. Um, and it's DK weight. I don't know what I'll do with it left over when I'm done. And it doesn't say what brand of yarn. Signet Yarns. So, so I'm working on that. I started that last weekend. I did the bucket and this and that blanket last weekend. First, I finished the blanket. I started that on a Friday night, finished it Saturday. Sunday morning, I made the bucket and the shovel. And then Sunday afternoon, I started the lion. And I did no crocheting all week, just school. And then um, today, I'm making the videos and then I'm going to finish the lion. Okay, so um, the next thing on this yarn chat is I got a package in the mail. I wanted to tell you guys about this. This is very exciting. I won't read the whole letter. So what happened was, that's from Seta. Um, so we do the yarn swap in our Facebook group. And sometimes, unfortunately, we have a few folks that will sign up for the swap. They'll receive their package and then never mail anything out. So usually I have Christy give me the names of people who don't get anything and I send them something. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't just do it because I'm a nice person. I do it because I love the yarn swaps and I want them to keep going. And I don't want anybody to feel like, oh, I sent all this stuff and summer steps and stitches didn't help me out. So, <laughs> I, so I always try to mail. Christy does a very good job of getting me the people who don't get their packages. And then whoever has neglected their yarn swap person, they have to deal with Christy if they wanna get back in. So one of the folks that unfortunately was um, cheated by her yarn swap person, I mailed her out a package. I think I mailed her out some Knit Crate yarn. My favorite, I love this yarn, the gray and black and pink and a few, you know, doodads. You know how it is, a couple hooks. Well, anyway, she wrote me this letter. She said that when she told Christy Wells about not her swap partner not participating, she didn't do it just to be, you know, sassy or anything, but she wanted to make sure that others didn't get partnered with her. 
And then she received my package in the mail. Well, wow, all I can say is thank you so much for your thoughtfulness and kindness. Um, she loved what I sent her. And to show appreciation, she sent me a few items. So um, on top are these two beautiful rainbow skeins of yarn. This is Willow Burbina. You know my reading skills on camera are poor. And this is a wool nylon blend. Uh, yards I can't see right now off the top. So, oh, 370 yards. So she sent me two of these. They're so beautiful and bright. Then she sent me some ice yarn. This stuff is so incredibly soft, you guys. It feels like angel hair. Um, this is, oh, it's over here. This is angel hair. No, it's tensile, tinsel, T-E-N-C-E-L, and polymide. Wow, it's so soft. And it's uh, 50 grams. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? What do they, I don't know if they have a colorway on these things. I think they usually give you numbers, right? Well, anyway, she sent me two of them. Oh, they're like silky angels. I don't know, they're so beautiful. And then at the bottom, this is where she sent me some treats that I'm going to read about to you. Okay, so this one, I believe, is... Oh, she sent them in bags, too. She was so, so thoughtful. In case um, they exploded, I'm guessing. And this Ziploc is a taste of Buffalo, New York. Um, with some original Anchor Bar Buffalo Wing Sauce. Medium recipe. Look at that. That's going to be fun. I'll put this bag down here because I will reuse this bag. And then, um, oh, let's just, let me read what it says. The buffalo wing sauce is from a bar who invented the chicken wings. We like to serve them with celery and blue cheese for dressing for dipping. Ranch dressing is a no-no. Well, here in Wisconsin, we love ranch. Um, you can also use the sauce to coat breaded chicken fingers. Then next is Frank's hot sauce. It's another big favorite used a lot. You can either use it to make your own wing sauce or mix the sauce with melted butter and coat the deep fried chicken wings. Or you can use it to make a chicken wing dip. Recipe is on the bottle. We like to cut it up and use it for French bread or taco dips for chips. So she sent me this bottle. I'm going to tell you what, my husband and boys are going to be real excited about this. Here's another bag for me to put over here to use later. And then the third sauce. I got three sauces, friends. And last but not least is our Weber's horseradish mustard. I like to use this on hot dogs, ham sandwiches, and I like to add it to potato salad or deviled eggs. Um, hope you give it a try and enjoy. So here it is. The Weber's brand horseradish. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I've had this for a little while on my counter, and my husband's been wanting to get into the sauce. I said, I can't let you until I make my video. So, this is a delightful treat, and this is from Lisa. Um, so, thank you so much, Lisa. She is in our Facebook group, Summer's Tips and Stitches. So, I very much, oh, and at the bottom, pardon me, I don't want to forget, she also gave me a variety of teas. Let's just share those right now, and then I'll put them in this little bag. Um, Sweet Dreams Herbal Tea from Bigelow. Another Bigelow Orange Spice Tea. I love orange tea. Cozy Chamomile. I love lemon. Mm, I do love lemon. And then a green tea, and then a mysterious something. Ooh, wonder if it says on the tag. Nope. So there's that. And I'm going to tell you what, it feels mysterious in there. It feels like um, little flat things. You see that? So I'm going to put these in this little bag. I'm going to take my sauces upstairs, and I'm sure my husband is going to be very excited to use them. We definitely are a sauce family, Lisa. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I never expect um, that the people I end up getting to send a treat to, I never expect them to send me back something. So it was a very nice surprise, Lisa. And I think that's all for the yarn chat, y'all. That's all I have for this. Um, my little surprise package, my few finished projects. 
I'm kind of trying to look for a clever way to store, hmm, organize my Crochet Society pattern books. Right now, I've been putting them in here. Clever, is that really? I don't think so. But I've been doing that because I wanted to clear off my desk space because they were getting piled up here. And so then as I, fin as I make something and I finish, I put the leftover yarn up here and then I recycle the box, or actually what I do is I put it on a shelf because I'm a hoarder, and then I plan on using them as gift package. You know, boxes for packaging. Um, I will say this to you guys. The, the shovel and bucket, this is how much yarn I had left over. So I could probably make a whole nother shovel and bucket if I wanted. I might actually try to make the other pattern in there. They had like a plant hanger and a little scarf. But I mean, the yarn that you get with these, it lasts for a while. Um, this is the leftover Snow Yeti yarn. This one, I used this and made a whole cat out of it, and I still have the extra. I didn't use the blue at all. So that is very nice. Um, the yarn that you get from Bella Coco's um, subscription boxes is always enough to do the project. And there's always a little bit more. And so that's always nice. All right. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Thanks for liking and sharing my videos. And in the next until the next video, happy crafting. Bye.